thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I very much agree with uh, 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 Richard Sennett just now, uh, who says that uh, interconnectedness is an important condition to happiness. And uh, if we are isolated from one another, we cannot be happy. Uh, but we are all interconnected as human beings, and if we care and feel interconnected, we should be happy. I'm going to show you some of my uh, uh, findings. Now, um, first of all, um, measuring happiness, what are we looking at, actually? We are not looking at the moods of people. We should be looking at uh, longer-term, more permanent factors in order to gauge the impact of uh, the physical environment, institution and political environment, cultural and social environment, economic factors. Uh, these are extrinsic factors. And then there are some intrinsic factors which have to do with the physical, mental, and spiritual health of the individual. Now, uh, we have been conducting this um, happiness survey at, uh, from Lingnan University since 2005. And the key survey question, among other questions, is this one taking everything together on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the most happy, uh, how happy are you? And uh, this, is, this is the result. And you can see that, interestingly, after uh, reaching a trough in 2007, uh, it started turning up. <laughs> and to our surprise, in 2008, uh, the survey was done after the uh, breakout of the financial tsunami. Uh, the uh, reported happiness index was actually uh, pretty much higher than the year before. And uh, what is the reason behind that? And um, interestingly, uh, we found that it has to do with the mental uh, qualities of, of Hong Kong people. And I had uh, uh, tested this happiness formula, which is based on life, uh, love, insight, fortitude, and engagement. And love is actually that interconnectedness that I have been referring to. Um, <clears throat> if we are all connected through life, the competency to deal with the complexities of life will be that much uh, higher. So, of course, it should be backed up by sufficient infrastructure, institutions, and an interest in life itself. Now, uh, I have uh, some questions uh, to ask for each of these, under each of these areas, and then I uh, uh, summarize or average the scores, and then I got these so-called life scores, uh, uh, our <coughs> fortitude and engagement. And uh, as it happens, uh, if we do the regression, we, we found that uh, these uh, life scores are extremely uh, important carrying very significant T statistics, so statistically extremely significant in explaining uh, ha happiness. Okay, and if we include some of the situational factors like financial stress, uh, gender, marriage status, income, then uh, uh, the explanatory power is slightly uh, 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 um, um, enhanced. And uh, <coughs> uh, it is clear that financial stress is, a, is an important uh, undermining factor uh, for happiness. Now, uh, this is the, uh, uh, based on the survey uh, conducted last year, but we have, uh, we have an online survey that has a much bigger uh, 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 sample, over 8,500 uh, um, uh, respondents, and you can see that, uh, you can see that, uh, oh, sorry. Um, you can see that uh, the, the life scores are extremely, they carry extremely high T-statistics, but uh, I highlighted those uh, negative uh, uh, factors, and you can see that age, aging, you know, if you have controlled all those uh, life scores, and you, interestingly, you see that happiness declines with, life, uh, with, with, with age. Okay, typically, uh, if we just look at uh, the happiness profile, ha ha happiness appears to rise with age. That is essentially due to, you know, we have found that, that essentially it's due to higher life scores associated with elderly, older people. Okay, so after you have control for the uh, life scores, uh, the age itself, because it reduces one's health, and uh, it has a negative effect on, 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 on happiness. And uh, um, 
Even more striking is the fact that education has been consistent found to be significantly negative on happiness. And it's something that we need to think about, you know, how we conduct our, our education. And then uh, un unemployment uh, undermines happiness and uh, uh, financial pressure is extremely uh, uh, negative factor on, 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 on happiness. And uh, if we request financial pressure against uh, uh, different factors, then interestingly, we find that uh, uh, um, private housing tenants uh, who have to pay high rent, okay, and the rent keeps rising, and they experience the highest um, um, financial pressures. Uh, and if we look at uh, how the life scores differ from group to group, interestingly, we find that the HOS, which is the Home Ownership Scheme, is a kind of uh, uh, low-cost uh, ownership scheme, okay, but it doesn't allow much room for capital gains. It allows some capital gains, but it doesn't allow that much capital gain. These people um, self-select themselves and buy these HOS homes, and they are a different bunch, different group, okay, because they um, are relatively contented and uh, they, they don't want to look for capital gain and so on. And you can see that these people consistently have uh, a uh, higher love score, insight score, fortitude, engagement, and happiness scores as well. And uh, our conclusion is that a personal attitudes toward life, summarized in the life formula, is most fundamental in determining happiness. Financial pressures undermine happiness significantly. High income beyond a certain point on average does not bring more happiness. So redistribution uh, policies pays in uh, enhancing happiness. Private housing tenants are subject to the greatest financial pressures. Public housing tenants appear to be happy. And actual as homeowners are different kind of people with the highest life scores and the highest uh, happiness. Thank you.